It's all about quality for William Haggis, a classic winning trainer and a man who knows how it feels to win at the most British of British meetings, Royal Ascot. It's Yeast being punched right out and is uh, careering away with a hunt cup. Yeast goes on to win by three lengths. Superstar Leo is pulling out all the stops and gallops a length and a half clear of Bouncing Bowdler and Superstar Leo wins the Norfolk. Busy finish to the Ribblesdale, bursting through Scottish stage and Montetoile. Montetoile's the stronger. Spike wandering about, he's too classy in the jersey and ridden out a cloud will score for Richard Hills. Collection took it up from staying on and then King of Rome and it's Collection in front and too good. High standing is wearing down Asset on the far side. High standing wins. They make their way up towards the line and it's approved in front, approved from Reckless Reward. William, you're one of the most ambitious trainers in the business. To win at Royal Ascot, what does that mean? And well, it's our Olympics, Matt, and uh, that's uh, our showcase meeting uh, for all trainers. And to win there is what everyone's trying to do. It's always tough every single year. You've had seven winners at the Royal meeting. Would you be able to pick out a highlight out of those seven? Well, seven's not enough in the years I've been training, um, but we've had some great moments. Um, a couple of two-year-olds, which I'm not really noted for two-year-olds. Um, I think the best a victory was Montetoile in the Ribblesdale. She was given a fantastic ride uh, and got up on the line to win it at 33 to 1. That was tremendously satisfying. Scottish stage going for a brave run, then Montetoile and reunite a busy finish to the Ribblesdale, bursting through Scottish stage and Montetoile. Montetoile's the stronger. Montetoile wins for Michael Hills, William Haggis in the colours of Leicester Piggott. I can't believe that Yeast didn't give you some sort of kick. Well, Yeast was our first uh, Royal Ascot winner. I think it was also Kieran's first Royal Ascot winner, this unheard of uh, Irish jockey based in the north with the Ramsdens and came down south and he gave him a great ride and was always going to win from the road, which is a long way from home. On the near side, though, it's Yeast under the whip by two or three lengths to Crumpton Hill and Tersham. Sirius is over on the far side, leading that group, followed by Zana. As they come up with a half furlong left to go, this might be another one for William Haggis. It's Yeast being punched right out and is uh, careering away with a hunt cup. Yeast goes on to win by three lengths. Second Tersham, third then Crumpton Hill. This time around, you've got what could be described, I guess, as a small but select team. Um, one of the big hopes would presumably be a vow if she goes in the Ribblesdale. How's she at the moment after Eric's run? She seems fine and Maureen's happy with her. Um, she, uh, she ran a solid race and so was given every chance and, and probably didn't finish off her race as well as we'd have hoped. Um, but it was only a third race and I, I'm very wary of the record of Oaks uh, runners in the Ribblesdale is appalling. Um, but this is a near three week gap now, it's 20 days. so. I don't think we'll make a decision right up until the last minute, but at the moment we're going to aim for Val to run in the Ribblesdale. Last year we had to wait a long time with Dancing Rain, who was absolutely bouncing after the Oaks. And it was seven weeks was a long time um, to keep her fresh and raring to go. So uh, if we can get another run into her before Ireland, I'd like to. She wasn't fit enough or ready enough to run as a two-year-old, and she she got one race too few this spring because of the horrible conditions but uh, you know she's fine she's got time to make up and I'm sure that um, Harry and the syndicate will hopefully keep her in training as a four-year-old if she's worth it. Epsom presumably is an experience for any filly first time at that track. Yeah Johnny wasn't just sure that she handled the track that well but I guess that's the same for everyone all those that didn't win the Oaks there's an excuse and a reason why they didn't and uh, on the day, our filly just didn't quite run fast enough. But, uh, you know, we hope she'll make some improvement. She's a nice physical specimen and, and she's got some room for improvement physically. And I hope she'll keep, keep going forwards. And, uh, you know, she's, she's come a long way from that first run at Newbury where, uh, you know, halfway down the home straight, she looked pretty ordinary. She's not dissimilar to Dancing Rain. They're not dissimilar at all. They're, they're both genuine staying fillies. As Michael Bell keeps pointing out to me, motivator, love the soft, and he's, and we were talking about it yesterday actually, and he, he I said I wasn't sure about soft ground, he said, uh, I bet she loves it. And uh, she coped with it okay at um, Newbury, so we'll see.
under pressure. Keep Classic, the favourite, comes through now to take it up, but only just on the far side, Novell and Ladd. Staying on all the time is Bathwick Bear. Cape Classic's going to do it. Cape Classic wins it. Fascinating horse you've got is Cape Classic, who we've been seeing on at the races. Could sneak into a handicap, possibly, if, if you've worked it out right? Well, we're trying to get him in the Buckingham Palace. Um, he's only run six furlongs this year. Uh, again, he, he needs top of the ground and he should have run three or four times by now and he's only been restricted to two races and it's been a bit of a rush. But he's going forwards. His, his half-brother, King's Apostle, improved dramatically from a handicapper to winning the Maurice, um, the Maurice de Geest as a five-year-old. He, he's a useful horse, Cape Classic and he's now up to 89 and if he sneaks in the Buckingham Palace he'll be competitive. Centre or shaken up has now quickened up to go on by a couple of lengths from Silver Hills in second. He's down in third place, Red 70, but Centreville is drawing clear in the closing stages and is set to make it two out of two as she quickens away and Centreville goes on to win easily. Centreville, another horse to look out for. Um, possibility in the jersey? Yeah, we're in a bit of a dilemma with Centreville because she's owned by um, Roy and Gretchen Jackson from Pennsylvania and they're very straightforward people and have let me do what I want throughout their uh, horses' careers with me. Uh, but she was bred and raised by Peter Stanley at New England Stud and he's adamant she should go for the coronation, which is a Group 1 fillies race on Friday, and we are not convinced that she's going to stay. She was very impressive on heavy ground at Newbury first time over seven. Then she went to Doncaster over seven, was a little bit sharper and uh, raced a little bit more aggressively and still picked up and won well. So we think she's okay at seven. I have this nagging doubt that she's going to get quicker as she gets older. And um, so I'm not sure about the coronation and I have another unbeaten filly uh, in that as well. Uh, who might well go, um, but the jersey is what we're targeting at the moment and uh, I find it hard to believe this filly's going to get a mile or even seven. I wasn't convinced she was a seven furlong filly when she first ran uh, and she only ran at Newbury because she has issues with the stores and Gary Witherford's been looking after her and that's near his home. So my gut feeling says that we should go jersey and then look to be dropping her back for the summer stakes at York in the middle of the summer but uh, We'll see how convincing Peter Stan Stanley is nearer the time. She's never let us down yet at home, and uh, nor on the track. She could end up in the Abbey, actually. But she's an Abbey fairly. She, she, I know it's seven furlongs, but she'd want. Well, but if she is William, she'd want to win the jersey, wouldn't she? Well, uh, no, she might not stay. She seven might just furlongs. outclass them. Oh, I don't know about that. I think that'll be a warm race this year, jersey. Val will hopefully spearhead William Haggis's new market raiders on Royal Ascot. But he's got plenty of other ammunition to fire, including this Fassar recent Leicester winner. We're well inside the final furlong. Liam Jones, he breaks a horrible Leicester hoodoo. He wins today, Nine Realms. Nine Realms was very impressive winning the maiden at Leicester the other day. What about Royal Ascot? Would there be a race for him? Well, he's still in the St James's Palace, Matt. It, that's probably flying a bit high. Uh, and he's also in the Britannia off 93, which is probably uh, more realistic for him. But he's a pretty nice horse, and he's going the right way. Um, you know, the form of his second at the Craven meeting, Cogito won the uh, Heron Stakes. He's going for the St James's Palace, and then he got beaten on the all-weather by Mawasem, who's not a bad horse of St Michael's. Um, so... You know, we'll see, but I think the owner's very keen to go for the St James's Palace if the trainer thinks that's the right move. So we'll put him in both and, and pick from there. Realistically, and I have to, you know, sometimes be honest with you, William, I can't see him winning a St James's Palace, but I could see him having a great chance in a Britannia. Is that unfair? I think that's a very fair comment, but um, you just never know. And, uh, and you know, if, if you adopt that policy... You'd never, uh, you'd never win a St James's Palace, so we'll see. We'll put him in. It'll be a strong race. The Irish 2000 Guineas winner uh, will be there, um, but it won't have Camelot, and um, you know, we'll see. And you could argue that away from Camelot, they're all much of a muchness. Possibly, but um, you know, Power's a good horse, a well-bred horse, but so is Nine Realms. He's a three-parts brother to Aklam, who was a Group 1 winner, so we'll, we'll, we'll see.
What about a horse called Hamat? Uh, possibility for the Wokium? Yeah, she's, uh, she's, she ran very well in a listed race last Saturday and the handicapper raised her seven and she's off her old mark. I don't think she's going to get in a Wokingham, sadly, but it would be nice if she did and she may well reroute to the Buckingham Palace or we may forget Ascot and try and make her a stakes winner. We'll have to see, but ideally a, a fast six furlongs like the Wokingham will suit her very well. Lord of the House, I mean, for me, he looks like he needs eight flight of hurdles in time. You would probably... <coughs> think he might be a bit better than that. Well, he, he, he ran for the first time in his life over two miles the other day at Haydock and I thought won very nicely, got left and still won nicely. Um, he's in the Northumberland plate, uh, which is the race I'd love to go for, um, but uh, he's also uh, possible for the Ascot stakes. I wouldn't want to run him in both, but um, you know he's a pretty nice horse and he, he, I don't think we've got to the bottom of him yet. And if he could get into the plate, I think he'd be quite competitive. Superstar Leo is pulling out all the stops and gallops a length and a half clear of Bouncing Bowdler. And Superstar Leo wins the Norfolk. Improved staying on Reckless Reward. XL Bolt perhaps beginning to struggle now. Stone of Focus Ebony. Approve is finishing with a rare old flourish. And then Reckless Reward as they make their way up towards the line. And it's Approve in front. Approve! You've got a couple of two-year-old Royal Ascot winners already. Um, a douge went into many a notebook at Chester when, when he won first time. And seeing him this morning at the yard, what, what I loved about him was that he's just so relaxed. He looks like he's a pensioner rather than a two-year-old. Yeah, he's, he's a very chilled te temperament. Interestingly, he's by Pivotal, who, who gets an enormous amount of stakes winners. And he's always been a sharp little horse and, and with a great temperament and a sound little horse. He's, he's a grand horse. And we sent him to Chester because we didn't really have time to get two runs into him. And he won well round there, probably an ordinary race, and he's probably got a lot to do. But I suspect the Coventry will be full of horses that have won a maiden and not much more, um, because everyone seems to be so behind. So he'd have a, 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 a sporting each way shot, but he should be 25 to 1, and he'll probably be 10 to 1. When he won at Chester, did you know William? No. I, uh, I hoped he would. Well, I think he was only 11 to 4 because I went and I rarely go racing and I go on a Saturday. To so you did know, you've just, you clearly did know. Um, what about Diala? Interesting animal, could go in the Sandringham? Diala was a, a, a good two-year-old and we were training her for the guineas and we were umming and ahhing whether to, to run her and we eventually ran her and she ran no sort of race. Uh, interestingly, she was drawn next to Grey Pearl, which I'm not, I don't say that made any difference at all, but I don't think it did her any good. And uh, somebody keeps pointing out to me the two, the first and second in the guineas were the only two that didn't go in the stalls before Grey Pearl's accident. Yeah. I'm not using that as an excuse at all. But she's off 90 and she's going to run with our Sardi in the Sandringham Stakes. And, uh... Eaten up. What, you know, you might think that Harris Tweed could end up in a race like the Hardwick, perhaps. What's happening with those two owned by Mr B Haggis? Well, beaten up. Uh, blotted his copybook in style at Epsom and we don't, we're don't. we still running tests on him to find out why. He was beating Mars out, wasn't he? He never went at all. Um, so I'm not sure about beating up at the moment, but I doubt he'll go for the Hardwick. Harris Tweed was second in the Hardwick last year to await the dawn and he will. he's a possibility if it got soft. Um, and, and if that happened, then he might well run, but otherwise I think we'll wait and go for the Princess of Wales at Newmarket. But it's a weather watch with him. I mean, he loves yeah. a bit of juice, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, so. he's, he's, he's only good with a bit of juice because it slows the others down. And, I mean, he's a gelding, isn't he, Harris yeah. Tweed? I mean, it, the old man, of course, historically has had some, or, or the family has had some very famous jumping horses. Is there any chance with a horse like no. him he'd ever jump a hurdle? No, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's not a, he'd never jump, no. Is that because he's a bit mad? No, he's not mad at all. But, Who, the old man or, or the horse? Well, no, the old man's not mad, and the Harris Tree's the kindest, most genuine horse. But he likes to, yeah, do he his likes own to thing. Pull along, but he'll be here forever, I would think. He's he's a lovely horse. We'll ne we'll never hurdle him unless he's sold, but I don't think he'll be sold. Right. But we might well go to Melbourne with him. Melbourne Cup. Be well, we might do because he, he's he's it's a hard to front run in a Melbourne yeah, Cup. Well, I don't think he has to front run either. Right. Well, at least he he would cope with that rush to the first bend. Yeah, he's quite nicely. he's fine. Is there a big rush to the first bend? There is always a big rush. And then they all stop. And then they stop, yeah. Yep. We'll have to see.
You so know that much would be, more about it than me. Well, no, no, nothing. But um, in general, your whole team for Ascot, if I was to absolutely say to you, William, your life depended on one winner at Royal Ascot 2012, which one would you... You know, Matt, we've got some nice runners, as you said, a small select team. And we'd have a lot that we hope would, would be competitive, but... Yeah. Just one, William. You know, we, it's hard to win. We didn't have one last year and we were upset about it. And we had two the year before. You know, it's a hard place to win uh, Royal Ascot. Um, I suppose if, if the ground was decent, I think, and he got in, I think Cape Classic would have a chance. I think uh, Avow would have a chance uh, if, she got a, if she ran in the, in the Ribblesdale. And Centreal, if she stayed, would have a chance. And of those three, Cape Classic, if it got in? No, we'll, 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 we'll have one at the away meetings during Royal Ascot. It will be the nap.